Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Final Fantasy 16 and uh, yeah, we're going to go and talk to Sid's daughter today. She kind of just came into the story out of nowhere. Alright, are there any other quests or anything we need to pick up on the way? Nope. Okay. Jill looked white as a sheet when they brought her back. The little ones have been up to their old tricks again. Now here's the thing. Clive only absorbs part. Come on, Otto. Uh, he only absorbs part of uh, these icons. The rest of the remaining power still remains with the people, so I wonder if, um, given enough time, if Ramu is going to be passed on to somebody. Shouldn't you be getting some rest? Can you imagine her turning into an old man Ramu? <laughs> I, I kind of want it. I kind of want to see it happen, not gonna lie. And there, there does seem to be precedence for it being passed down in the family. Um, because Annabella is uh, basically the holder of the Phoenix line, so. You took your time. I'm a busy man, Mid. I'll get to the point then. I want to turn the room down there into a workshop like the one I had at Dad's place. Mid, you've only just come back. And? I've been thinking about it for a while. Dad said I had a knack for engineering. Told me everything he knew about it. Then sent me off to Canva to learn everything he didn't. That was his dream for me. That one day I'd put my studies to use for the good of the cause. But I'm helping no one stuck at school. I've studied enough. It's time I put me knack to work. I know that I can help the people here. And I want to do it. Well, well, well. If Sid could see you now. All right? I'll tell Otto you'll be staying. I knew you'd say yes, which is why I wrote up a list of jobs for you. For me? Who else? <sighs> what do you want me to do? First things first, I need equipment and materials to start making my own. There's the design to the stuff I need and the stuff it needs smithing from. The other materials I can work myself. Just need a generous benefactor to lay them on for me. Apart from the wood, I'll need a carpenter for that, but I can just borrow yours. Is that everything? For now. I'll let you know if I need out else. Alright, girl's got a lot of pep. Getting to work. Let's see what we can do for uh, Sid's, Sid's daughter. Let's start. Materials and tools. That means Karen and Blackthorn. Sid's gonna chop off Kupka's head this time. God, if only I'd done it before, huh? Before, I'm still... Quite disappointed at how close we got to finishing off Koopka. How's it coming along? Oh yeah, something else I was thinking about. I don't think I have the ability points for it, but oh, you know what? Maybe I do. No, wait. Yeah, no, that is the right one. Okay, cool. We did have enough ability points. Mostly, I wanted to do that because, well, frankly, um. Garuda's Deadly Embrace is used to, um, sort of knock people over, and I find that more useful than Ramu's Blind Justice. I don't really like the Blind Justice one that much. Seems to get me into trouble more often than not. I end up taking hits while I'm trying to use it. Blackthorn, you busy? What's it look like? I have a commission for you. From mid. She requires certain tools. Okay, so what does that say? Sketches of ineffable devices seemingly drawn from the pages of Mad Alchemist Notebook, and a list of the equally exotic alloys from which such things are smithed. Do you think you can make them? Bloody hell. Was she planning to build with this stuff? An airship? Ooh. Yeah. Maybe. I'll see what I can do. Oh, God. Till I bring them over when I'm done. Is she act? She might be. We're literally inside of an old airship. Just saying. My thanks. And mids, no doubt. 
Blackthorn may have hit it on the head, huh? Was wondering where you'd got to. Mid's back from Canva. Have you seen her? Just now. She's planning to set up a workshop in the stores and ask me to buy her some materials. Here's the list. Okay. The noxious vapors that spilled from the cracks around a certain door in Sidolfa's Telemon's Deadland hideaway would sting the eyes and burn the nose of anyone who stayed too, strayed too close. Combining every ingredient on the list would no doubt produce a similar result. Think you can find everything on there? This lot? <laughs> would be much of a trader if I couldn't. Excellent. As for payment... It's paid. Hundred times over by what that girl's done for us. Fair if it enough. weren't for her filters, we'd have not to drink but blight water, and that would have drained the life out of us long ago. Alright, she's Can truly a what? talent. I'll send the stuff on to Mid when it comes in. Thank you, Karen. That just leaves the carpenter. Let's see if Bardolph's available. Okay, it looks like there's new stuff at... Karen what and Blackthorn. Ask about Mid. <laughs> Is irrepressible the word? The girl doesn't let anything get her down, that's for certain. Quite the opposite. In fact, uh, she's got a way of making every bugger else get up and dance to her My tune. Father -like daughter. I'd say it ran in the blood if I didn't know better. Can't wait to see what kind of queer contraption she comes up with next, so long as she doesn't try and rope me into the building it for her. If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. Okay. Come again. Or don't. I'm not much bothered either way. Clive. Summer storm, that one. Rolls in when you least expect it, soaking you to your skin and leaving you wringing your breeches. <laughs> Just like her old man. Keeps us on our toes, though. What's that for you, dear? Okay, grindstone. Um. Honestly, if I can't reinforce it, I don't think I'm gonna do that one yet. Nah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I do say so myself. That it. Fine. Do, Master Sid? Bardolf. Mid's looking to build a workshop in the storeroom, and she needs the aid of a skilled carpenter. So naturally I thought of you. Well, I'd love to help the young miss however I can. But I'm afraid I got my hands full just keeping this place afloat. There's holes need patching, and if I don't patch them, will all of us sink into the mere? I'd gladly spare Mid all the time I have, but the sad truth is I ain't got none. <sighs> I see. It don't have to be me, though, does it? What about that other fella? You know, the one over at Martha's Rest. Uh, Bernard, was it? That's right. And he is a friend of the cause. I'll ask Martha if she can spare him. Thank you, Vardolf. <laughs> Least I could do. Okay, so we're heading out to Martha's Rest, then. 
And while we're there... Oxcry Cliff. Okay, there's going to be a hunt here. And I still don't know where West Rhiannon's ride is. Alt Hill, Quicksands. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it might be over here or it might just be like here or something. Yeah, this might be a diff- okay, but this is where one of the other hunts is. Gotcha. Alright, we're gonna do both. Okay, so the Hawks Cry Cliff. So, mm, damn. So I can't use Deadly Embrace unless I have it equipped. I thought I could switch it out like I could switch out these when I had them um, unlocked. So I guess, yeah, it's going to be hard to never like not have Garuda because um, being able to partially stun people when they're halfway through their stagger bar is really valuable. But there's no way for me to take Deadly Embrace. What I want to do is to have Rama's abilities equipped, but Deadly Embrace. But what that would require is for me to have the Ramu abilities completely maxed out. So, yeah, okay. <sighs> Okay, so for this one, stone is the one that has basically the um, creeping wall, and then upheaval is, okay, just a smash down, gotcha. And then otherwise we have a block with circle. Also, just for the sake of it, I want Garuda there and Titan there, because they've gotten used to Garuda being in that second slot.
Alright, you know what? This is nothing but cliffs, so let's run around until we find this guy. Okay, not up here. It forced me off. So, yep, this is it. Take us away. Decision block. button
I got greedy. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna go here. We're going to make sure that we have all of our potions maxed out. We're gonna go and talk to whoever we need to talk to here. Maybe we'll go to the other fight. And then maybe we'll come back to that. Now, what level was he? Like a 48? Which we're... What level are we? Where can I see that? We're a 31. So, technically, we're pretty underleveled for that guy. And we still almost got him, but... It was not a very clean fight on my part either, though. Um, also, we're using new abilities that I'm not very good at. <laughs> Don't know how to Clive, use Titan yet. What brings you to the rest? Our uh, home finds itself in need of an extra carpenter. I wondered if I might be able to borrow Bernard for a short while. I don't mind if he don't. We're all friends here, aren't we? Thank you, Martha. Do you know where I might find him? He went up to Cressida on business. No idea what, mind. Place is a ruin. Far as I know, he's still there. I'll look for him there then. Okay, yep, shopkeeper right here. How do? We've got maxed out potions. Okay. Thanks very much. I forgot I do have elixirs. Take care out there, eh? So that's a thing. Definitely could have used that in the fight, and we probably would have won had I done it. Um, okay, so. Yeah, we need to go over here for a hunt anyway. So that works out really well. Okay, that's our guy. Secret rank B. Let's go.
come on. Forgive me.
Well, that goes to sleep easy without him at their gaze. All right, I went quiet mode because I was a little bit salty there, but beat him on our second try. And with him dead, my salt is cleansed. No more salt for me. Hey. Did we miss that the first time, or... Do those replenish? Yeah, that bridge was definitely broken last time we were here. All right, new area. Oh, I bet ain't the lad who saved my life. What brings you to a place like this? You do, Bernard. Martha said I might find you here. I have a proposition for you. Oh, do you know? Building a workshop, you say? <laughs> well, that beats tacking boards to bridges, sure enough. And if Martha didn't mind me being gone a while, then neither do I. You just tell me where you want me. <laughs> That's the spirit. I, uh, I couldn't ask a favor, though, could I? Before we go? Of course. <laughs> well, that there is Cressida. Where I grew up. Ain't much left of it now, though. Except my parents' graves. But I, I came up here hoping to visit. I even patched up the bridge to get across. Only to find the place crawling with fiends. But you're a dab hand when it comes to dealing with beasts and bogles, ain't you? Any chance you could, uh... It's the least I can do. Well, thank you kindly. And take care. Okay. This shouldn't take long. That far away? Come on, bro. Ugh! 
That should do it. <laughs> you made short work of that lot. Thank you, son. Now my folks can rest in peace once more. How long is it since the village was abandoned? Oh, people started packing their things after the duchy fell. Between the Blight and the Imperials, you just couldn't make ends meet. Must be nigh on a decade since the last wagon left. Though it may as well have been a century, looking at the place. This isn't the Cressida I remember. I'm sorry. Ah, don't be. Can't live in the past, no matter how nice it might have been. As soon as I'm done saying a prayer for those that raised me, it's onto your hideaway. I'll meet you there. That should take care of Mid's little list. Better head back before she thinks of anything else. Okay, now I need to decide if I want to try and fight that ooze monster again. Or if we want to come back later when we gain a couple more levels. I mean, we got really close, but... Even being as underleveled as we are. So I think if we put our mind to it, we can do it. It's just a matter of if I care to. <laughs> I may give it a little bit. Okay, well, we'll be back here for something. Sorry I ain't been back to see you in so long, but I... I got some news for you. <laughs> I'm to be wed. All right, we'll give the man some space. All right, I think we're done. Yeah, we'll come back and do this again later. Another of my lectures. Allow me to educate you.
Okay. These are like relationship things. So we're best friends with Torigal, totally makes sense. But what does this mean? Why are, are, like, how is it that after five years that we are not hooking up? We've got to be, right? We've got to be hooking up by now. We've nearly kissed in scenes multiple times, and you're telling me that over five years he didn't make a single move? Two beautiful people, Jill and Clive, sitting together, not making babies? I don't know, man. It's pretty unrealistic, gotta say. The state of the realm is ever-changing, Clive. Yeah. Can we go down? How if I never realized that you could go down here? <laughs> Sorry, but I've got a few more sets of small clothes that can do with the rinse. Well then. All right, who you swooning over now, Asta? Blackthorn may be the manliest of men, <laughs> but he does lack a certain tenderness. Goots, meanwhile, is as burly as a behemoth, but as innocent as a babe in arms. Pick a lane, girl. She's thirsting after everybody. Shouldn't you be getting some rest here? Clive, you've all done then? I am. I've placed your various orders, and a carpenter by the name of Bernard is on his way from Martha's Rest. That's brilliant. Thanks, Clive. Is there anything else you need? Nope. Blackthorn and Lady Karen have already sent over everything I asked for, and I've got all my plans drawn up. So as soon as Bernard gets here, we can get to work. <laughs> I can't wait. I want to know what she's up to. What you building, girl? <sighs> That's my good deed for the day done. Let's see how Jill's faring. Did Bernard say how long he was going to be? I mean, it's fine, but I hope he comes soon. Okay, we've opened up some side quests. Clive. Talia. How's Jill? Recovering, but she still needs her rest. Of course. Take good care of her, won't you? I'll do my best. Oh, Gav was looking for you. He said he had something to show you in the shelves. The shelves? Oh, that's right. He went to ask Hippocrates about Togo. He must have found something. Okay, what do you got for me? You have the look of a man with the twins upon his shoulders, Rodrigue. Taya has tasked me with removing a curse breaker's brand. But it's my first time and I... I don't think I can do it. I'm afraid of what happens if I fail. You survived, I know, but... Here as many die as recover. Mm, didn't know that. Really worth the risk. You don't need me to answer that. You know full well what we're fighting for. I hope as much as you that one day bearers can walk among others as equals. But until that day, a brand is a burden. And we must lift that burden in order to go undetected. The operation may be dangerous, but it's also essential. And we undergo it willingly. Oh no. I still wish there was some other way, but griping about my lot helps no one, I suppose. Don't worry. I'll do what must be done. I know you will. Unfortunately, the first thing that he's doing is the preparation of a draft to dull the pain. Something I can't do with the infirmary's ammonia supply so low. What few leaves we have would Barely be enough for removing a splinter, let alone a brand. Just tell me what you need. 
You... you'll go? Oh, thank you. No one knows Herblor like Tyre, and she swears by ammonia for easing pain. It's simple enough to find, if you know where to look, and fortunately for you, I do. Along the river near the village of Amber over in Rosaria. Just search for the bright blue blossoms. I overheard your little chat with Rodrigue. It's good of you to help. Been doing mid's bidding out here. Yeah, she's wrote me in at all. Mammy promised to sweep the old blooming cellar for her. The little ones have been up to their old tricks again. Do you have a moment, Sid? A team of curse breakers has gone missing near Northreach. Which team? Coles. They were sent to liberate a carriage of bearers before they could be smuggled to market. They were moving in for their assault when the carriage was attacked by goblins. A curse breaker managed to release a stolas amid the confusion, but <sighs> this was days ago. That doesn't they sound promising. Back by now, but I've heard nothing from any of them. I can't help but worry that they know the work is dangerous, but I'm sure they're fine. But what if I've got them all killed? Before they go out, I always remind them why we're doing this, what they escaped, and what we're freeing people from. But I never really thought how my words might affect them. What risks they might take because of the things I've said. I'll go and find them. We'll both rest easier knowing they're safe. Thank you, Sid. And I'm sorry to trouble you with this. The plan was to intercept the slaver somewhere in the Dragon's Airy. I can't tell you much more than that, I'm afraid. That should be enough to go on. If they were there, Torgal will track them down. Alright, is there anything else we need to do? We don't need any reading. Okay. Jill looked white as a sheet when we brought it back. We'll go talk to Gav. See if he found something about Torgal. I'm very curious. Clive, where have you been? I've been wanting to ask you something about Torgal. Where did you get him? Like, in the first place? Uh, my father brought him back from one of his expeditions into the Northern Territories. They were crossing a snowfield when they heard his cries, and well, seeing no sign of his pack, they took him in. What do you reckon, Tomes? It certainly adds weight to the theory. Clive, I believe that Torgal may be no mere hound, but a rare frost wolf, an animal native to the far northern reaches of Valisthea. In one of our oldest bestiaries, I found reference to a frost wolf who served as guardian to an ancient queen of the north. Such was his mastery over ether, he could cast magics on command. His name was Fenrir. Fenrir the Frost Wolf. <laughs> cool. Now, the annals do not state it explicitly, but I have reason to believe this queen was a dominant of Shiva. A girl from the Northern Territories and her faithful hound. One awakens as the dominant of Shiva, and the other... You're saying that Jill granted Torgal his powers? What? Yeah, that's cool. Just like Fenrir. People called him my hound, but Torgal and Jill were inseparable. He grew up as a faithful companion to the dominant of Shiva, and years later, his powers awakened. Just when his master needed him the most. You're right. If it weren't for Torgal blasting those bastards to kingdom come, Jill would have been for it. 
quite. Though Torgal's power is his own, his latent birthright as a Frostwolf, it had only to be unlocked. Oh, get you, Torgal! <laughs> You're an even finer hound than we thought. And he was already a fine hound. And regarding your original concern, you need not fear for Torgal's health. Why, the beast has the appetite of a behemoth. Just this very morn, I found him with his nose buried in my nuts. <laughs> I didn't laugh. I'm, I'm an adult. I am there mature. I'm an adult. I've been looking everywhere for you. Bernard's here. I, I need you to introduce us so we can get to work. <sighs> I shall be a moment. I didn't laugh, guys. I didn't. All right, what's she doing? What is she doing? Sometime later. So she's got a workshop now, but what's she gonna build? <sighs> Isn't it brilliant? It is. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. You and everyone else. But I promise I'll pay you back. I'm gonna work my fingers to the bone for you lot. Starting right now. Just you wait. I'll make wonders like this world's never seen. Then I look forward to seeing them. Now that that's settled, I wonder if Vivian's made any progress tracking down Kupka. We have everything we need to begin work in earnest. And work in earnest we shall! <laughs> okay, so the game's not telling us what she's doing, but this is going to come back in a big way. Thanks for before, son. That was a good deed you did me. Only right I do you one in return. Though I did wonder if I'd bit off more than I could chew when Mid showed me her plans for the place. If she hadn't been there to tell me what to do, I wouldn't have known where to start. Thanks for letting me do this, Clive. I'll pay you back, I promise. Okay, not really sure what this is. <sighs> I wish Miss Mididor would let us help her with her dungeoneering. I wonder what she's going to dungeon in at. Okay. I think I'll wait till mid's away to take it to I think we're almost done here. Alright, what are the goings on now, Vivian? How goes the hunt for Kupka? Largely in circles. We have myriad sightings of strange soldiers in unexpected places. But nothing definitive as yet. If only we knew for certain by what route he left Rosalith. Well, keep at it. If anyone can piece this puzzle together, it's you. And I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. Oh, he's literally going to wait. Hello? <laughs> what? Here? Yeah, guess Would so. Would that be a problem? Do you know, Clive? <laughs> I believe it a mercy that you didn't inherit your father's throne. Oh, that's funny. Your poor people would surely live in fear of you. You have nothing to worry about on that front. I won't be claiming his crown. <laughs> that is a relief. Ouch. Uh, Clive, have you got a minute? We, um, have a guest. A guest? If 
for your trouble. Oh, it's our it's uncle. Okay. You know, inside. <laughs> for a second, I was wondering if it was going to be Dion. Uncle Byron? Clive, my boy! Tap a cask and stoke the ovens for your favorite uncle is here! <laughs> Well, I certainly hope it's safe for him to know where our base is. Okay, meanwhile. Twinside, the Holy Empire of San Breck. The seat of the Imperial Court. I love how they just moved. The Dalmechian government sues for peace. How shall we respond? If they're willing to accept their fault in the matter, I see no reason to refuse them. Still, uh, we must insist on substantial reparations. Uh, twin side stores are not as bottomless as reported. Okay, so we've got the five cardinals. I wanted to look at Dion's, but... Because he's, he's considered the prince, which means that he's related to the emperor. Presumably his son, but Joshua seems to think that he might side with us, which I find interesting. The five cardinals are the senior statesmen that make up the highest office of government in San Breck after the emperor himself, the Council of Elders. The council is comprised of the high cardinal representative of central San, San Breck and the holy capital Oriflam, and the four cardinals who administer the outer provinces, the northern, southern, eastern, and western seas. Aye, and we have many more mouths to feed. We shall just have to have the Dalmex empty their treasuries for us. Of course, none of this would have been possible without your timely intervention, Prince Olivier. Indeed, I doubt any of us would have had the courage to trade words with the mighty Titan, nor less the wit to win him over. There's something wrong with this kid. I mean, with that mom, I guess you can see why. The Empire owes you a great debt. May the blessing of the crystals go with you, your highness. May the blessing of the crystals go with you. Very good. Now, let us come to the question Ooh. of precisely when the Dalmex will withdraw their troops. I wouldn't fire could rid us of them in mere moments. I wouldn't want her smiling at me like that. The men of the fists will not withdraw until a peace treaty is concluded. So let us keep the negotiations open, give them time to gather what gold and trinkets they can. And once they deliver that which we demand, what worth is a piece of parchment? <sighs> Your radiance. Were Prince Dion to take the field, the enemy would surely send their own dominant to meet him. And while his highness would of course prevail, there would be heavy losses on both- You need not fear Hugo Kupka. He is engaged on the Western Front. Even were the Dalmex to send for him, he would not arrive in time. As much as I would enjoy witnessing a clash between Bahamut and Titan, it is not to be. And what of your subjects, your radiance? If the fighting spread to the city proper, the people would bear the brunt of it. There will be losses, it is true. Yet for every citizen who falls, another can be bred. Jesus. For every home that burns, another can be built. The Empire will live on. Dion? Yes, sir.
let's not forget, Annabella's gonna... Like, she has plans to kill Sylvester. Prepare for battle. But sire... Do not make me repeat myself. Return to your camp and await my orders. Okay, so Dion Lesage. Firstborn son and loyal subject of Emperor Sylvester, ruler of the Holy Empire of San Breck, as well as leader of the Empire's most elite fighting force, the Dragoons. Dion is also the dominant of Bahamut, Warden of Light, and has often been called upon to summon his icon in defense of his countrymen. Most recently in the year of the realm, 873, when Odin took to the field against them in the Battle of Bellinus Tor. Okay, Olivier Lesage, second son of Emperor Sylvester of the Holy Empire of San Breck, and third of Empress Annabella, making him half-brother to both Prince Dion and Clive. His mother has involved him in the affairs of the Imperial Court since he was a small child. A wyvern tail, the elegant white flower that is a symbol of the Holy Empire of Sandbreck. If that is your wish, your radiance, I shall depart at once. Gregor, forgive you. What do the astrologers augur? The stars are in agreement, your radiance. The shadow of treachery hangs over Prince Dion. So Annabella's tales were true. You disappoint me, Dion. He might turn it into a self-fulfilling prophecy. What on earth is Uncle Byron doing here? Only one way to find out. All right, well, with that, we're going to end this episode. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.